So this is my plan. It's hot outside, perfect time to go think about solar panels and stuff like that. If you've seen my Instructable, you know that I made a solar panel like 25 years ago. And now I'm actually gonna try to utilize it because I got a new lawnmower that is battery powered and I love it. What I would like even more is that if I could use my solar panel as the charger for the batteries, hook it up to an inverter and just kind of mount it right next to my shed because I keep my outside shed as the hub of all my gardening stuff as most people do, I'm sure. But we're gonna go out there, we're gonna get leaves out of our hair and then I'm gonna show you how I'm gonna hook this up. All right, so we're out in the back and this is my plan. So most of you are probably thinking I'm gonna be mounting this bad boy up on the roof of my shed. However, I'm a bit nervous about that because I don't want my shed to leak if I do it incorrectly. And I do not wanna pay somebody to do it for me because I'm a very cheap person, if you don't know this already. So what I plan on doing is I got a nice little spot right over here where I can try to set up the panel and just still utilize the angle in which I, in the state in which I live, to properly utilize the most sun throughout the day. Now granted, we get less sun than Seattle, but that's beside the point. We're not gonna worry about that. Solar panel mounted right here. I'm gonna try to get these bricks that you see right there. I'm gonna level them out in that area where the rocky bits. That way, I can have the panel and it can face the sun out this way. I can roll the wire down underneath and through we're just gonna, whoops, right there, right up the, right up the back side of the shed. All right, so there's the culprit right there. And what I wanna do is run some conduit. I have some conduit pieces that were left over from another house thing that the previous owner did. So I got these little coupler pieces. I got these little 90s. And what I wanna do is try to make it semi-professional to run the wires from this guy. I'll just take up these wire nuts run it down, drill a hole right here, and then come out the, out the other side. That way, we can still protect it from the elements to a degree. Now, this guy survived a lot. It survived a couple moves. Actually, it survived three moves and my buddy's kid. That's why there's a big crack right in the center of it, but it still works. It's still holding tight. The glass is strong. The will is strong. We're gonna get this guy. We're gonna harness the sun here in a little bit. So I have the solar panel outside and the bulbous end of this guy is an inch because I've got my spade right here. So I'm gonna go ahead and drill a hole. This is about five feet, or sorry, this is four feet from the side, which is about where the solar panel is on this direction, on the other side of the, of the bing bong. So, bing bong being shed, of course. I mean, obviously. I think I'm gonna go about right here. I can feel the bottom, I can see the bottom. Don't be afraid of the bottom. Push it. There we go. Push it to the limit. limit. All right. Ball time. Well, that's where that weed is starting. So now that I've got my piece up in there, Nate, no, it up. Boom. We start feeding this through like so, and then we're gonna get this out the other end. <laughs> Fantastic. So now that I have the wires fed it kind of comes so it comes down from beneath through the conduit and then it comes up and travels through another bend focus into my junction box and previously I just had this uh, configured with wire nuts so we got a sunny day let's check this out I clean my pool with lights a little funky in terms of loudness but I got this situated and let's see boom Charging light is lit, which is a plus. Uh, no pun intended. But going into this guy, let's check this out. So we got zero volts on the battery, and this is pretty well charged, I imagine. I haven't really messed with it for a little bit, but we got 12.53 volts. So 12.53, and what's coming off of the charger? 
This is on the fly, so let's see what do we got. What do we got on this sunny day? 13.8. That's not bad. I mean, it's like semi cloudy. Oh, 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 there it goes. It's dying. It must have been a cloud. Or a solar flare. Anyways, we'll connect the P and the V for voltage. All right. Now, let's check this out. Let's go to negative. We've got ooh, 1266, 1267, 1268. Yeah, keep rising. Rise up, gonna get higher and higher. Woo! Dope. So it's going up, which is a plus. Let me keep it going. Keep it fresh. Yeah, 71, 1272. You're gonna see it. Nice. So there we go. I called it a success. Successful charging. All right, so now I have my setup completely <clears throat> uh, set up. And as you saw before, right, the wires are being fed out of the ding dong. We'll clean this up later. We don't want it to just dangle. But just to get the, uh, the point across is that your solar panel has to go to, well, it doesn't have to, but it's preferred to go to the charge controller. And what the charge controller is going to do is just help prolong and protect the life of your battery. Now, this battery right here, this is a deep cycle marine battery and what that does and how that is helpful in my situation and in the solar panel situation is that it can take the charging discharging all the way charging discharging all the way it just it's it's made for that right so if you use like a car battery or say like an rc toy battery wired in series or parallel or series parallel you might run into situations where your batteries are dying quicker than you might have anticipated which you know is just something to research and something to keep in mind so the solar panel goes to the charge controller the charge controller connects to the battery in order to charge it and also to control set charging in order to prolong the life now you could take your solar panel and charge your battery thusly directly and use loads off of it right power lights power whatever something that would use a dc uh, power use dc voltage uh, however if you want to use ac voltage you're going to have to get yourself a uh, inverter and what this guy does is I have this one here. It is a 400 watt power inverter. And so the wattage is important because this is gonna take your your maximum output for your load. So like I couldn't charge like, a, or I couldn't connect to the AC outlet right here from the DC battery to convert it into an AC, uh, AC voltage supply to power my laptop for a significant amount of time. I can't put a TV on here. I can't put an air conditioner on here. There's no way, like a window unit air conditioner, not gonna happen. You're gonna need a, significant high, a significantly larger battery bank and or inverter in order to get that kind of situation uh, where you had you know, thought like, oh, well, I have one solar panel and a battery, I'm gonna power my washing machine. No, not gonna happen. Another thing you might wanna consider in terms of inverters since we're on the subject is that this is just, uh, for lack of a better phrase, just a regular power inverter. It converts DC to AC voltage. However, if you want smooth transition, say, to power a very tiny television or your smart device, you might want to consider getting a pure sine wave inverter. And what that's going to do is just help you smooth everything out. So with this one that I have here, it looks like a sine wave in, in that it, it'll take a step and it's just kind of like, you know, you have to imagine this is blocky. Like, let's say this is my x-axis. It's going to go up, block, up, block, down, block, down, block, down, block, down, block, up, block, up, block. And it just really looks chunky. You know what I mean? So it's a sine wave in in theory, but it's not a pure sine wave where your pure sine wave is very smooth up and down motion, right? Pure sine wave inverters, good for that kind of stuff. And why I say a little TV or something like that is because like your TV isn't going to flicker and look goofy. It's going to be like relatively smooth and as a sine wave and AC power should should be and, and you know, an AC electrical theory. So that is that. So let's see, where have we got so far? We talked about the panel connected to the charger, connected to the battery, connected to the AC inverter, and then you have your power going to the booyah right here. This is my battery charger for my various loads. So whenever I go to put this guy on, right, it took a little second to get the, to come on and that's okay. And now it's saying like, hey, you have a fully charged battery because I don't see anything. But Whenever I connect my battery to charge, this is going to go red. This is just my particular brand. It's not specific to my solar output. It's just particular to the brand of battery charger. And so what I can do with this is that I can take these batteries and I can power my yard tools, which is the whole point of this video, right? I want to use the, I want to harness, harness the power of the sun in order to do my bedding to destroy the earth. And by that, I mean grass. Okay, that was a lot to digest. Here it is again in a quick summary. So I have 
my solar panel, which is feeding my power to the charge controller, which is going to help prolong the battery life of my deep cycle marine battery. So that just means that I can prolong the life of this going from 12 volts down to zero, 12 volts down to zero, 12 volts down to zero, so on and so forth. If I wanted a DC voltage power source, I could just connect directly to the battery. If I want an AC power source, you need a power inverter. And if you want a more expensive and, and more efficient sine wave AC output, you get the pure sine wave inverter. That's gonna help you charge your AC loads, which here is a battery, uh, but it could also be utilized to power lights or uh, some other kind of device like um, like a tiny TV or, or a little, uh, maybe not so much a heater because that takes a lot of voltage or wattage, but you get the idea. So I understand that some folks might be thinking, well, why would you take a solar panel to charge a battery, to go to an inverter to charge a battery. That seems horribly inefficient. And granted, that is correct, because now I have to take my battery that has been charged, DC voltage, convert it into AC, just to convert it with the uh, wall wart back to DC to charge my battery. Now, that may be true, and if you want to tinker around with that in order to get your your batteries directly onto the charge controller, by all means, you can do that. That way you don't have to go from DC to AC back to DC. You could just go straight from the solar panel to DC. That's fine. Um, I am not, I'm pretty lazy. So uh, I don't need uh, instant gratification for solar to DC. So I can take the time in order to get those inefficiencies to do solar to DC to AC to DC. So for all the haters out there, I understand it, but I'm not gonna tinker that far into it and risk breaking my my controller for the charger for the yard tools. Was that a marmot? Oh, that's a cat. That's my cat. Stop eating grass, go chase the birds or the voles. Get a vole. Oh, there she is. She's got the hunger. All right, it's the early mornings of a hot summer day. And you can see there's a lot of dewiness on my solar panel, but it's still uh, been up and running for a little over a year now. And uh, yeah, that's how long it's been since I have held on to and put out this video but I just wanted to also point out that yes this is just a plywood structure uh not plywood but two by fours or sorry one by wait what is this two by three the two by three come on cuz and uh and while it still looks in rough shape it's uh still working quite thoroughly so this thing survived actually a very harsh winter with a lot of snow and also just chilling in the sun, getting beat down with rain, you know, so on and so forth and everything, nothing short circuited. I've never had to come out here and troubleshoot it. Uh, the only real aesthetic difference is that you can see from the beginning of the video to the end is that this is great significantly. So the only thing I really have to watch is the fact that I might have to build a new stand, but oh no, I'm gonna be out some two by threes, which given today's prices might suck compared to pre-COVID prices, but you know what, it's, uh, it is what it is and I'm okay with that, so. That's why I chose to build my own solar panel. That's why I chose to use the glass that I chose to use. And if you want to check out that Instructable, I'll leave a link down in the description. And uh, this was like pre-YouTube pre days for me. So check that out in the Instructable. I'd appreciate that. Also, give me a like and a thumbs up. And we'll see you on the next one. Peace.